Welcome back to Jump Scare. I'm Betty. And I'm Shad. This week we cover anything for Jackson. Hello, my name is Audrey, and this is my husband, Henry. Mm. We don't want to hurt you or your baby. We feel this would be the best way for you to go missing. Uh, Walt, huh? morning. I'm here to clean your drive. No, no, everything's okay. Thank you so much for the book. Hail Satan. No one has more time than a grieving family. We can do this. He's coming back to us. Trick or treat. out of date because it came out this year 2020 uh and it's a shutter film so you'd have to get shutter in order to watch it um you know the movie starts off well before we get into the movie we'll talk about the it's about these grandparents who basically quote unquote make a deal with the devil to get their grandson back but That description, which is in a lot of reviews and stuff, does not apply per se because it's not the devil. The devil is very busy. Um, He doesn't have time to be making deals with like mere humans that don't really have anything to offer him. It's a demon that they summon. It's not a devil. So let's just clear that up. Yeah. Okay. That in the whole movie, because, you know, you have it said like oh the devil worshippers and these people whatever but it's just a demon that comes back with some other unsavory characters uh, that come back but basically that's what it is it's being compared to like hereditary which the only aspect I would say is the people that are grieving the loss of a loved one and how they take that grief and turn it into something horrendous um, and it doesn't work out for them Spoiler alert, it doesn't work out for them. <laughs> <laughs> Does it ever in these movies? The movie starts off with... I was like, this movie's going to be bad. <laughs> I'm like, why did they start the film with the Daisy Bell song? Which many of you may or may not know the song uh, Hal from 2001's Odyssey. He sings the song um, in that film. And then it's also used in the Scream TV series. Like throughout the whole series of the first season. Um, it's like hearing the tulip song, you know, the tiptoe through the tulips. Yeah, it's, it's like there are so many other songs that could be used. Why did you specifically get this song? At one point, I thought that the lyric said Henry, Henry, which would make sense because the grandfather's name is Henry, but it's actually Harry. Um, so I didn't understand the connection with having that but okay i'm just probably just reading too much into something they just wanted a freaky song that old people are going to be listening to even though these people are with i feel are a little young for this song but you know whatever they live in a dope house let's just throw that out there which it turned out he's the director's house so yeah he has a nice house you have a beautiful house sir uh, it's pretty spacious too. I, of course, I imagine they took a lot of the stuff out of there just to make it easier to film. But it's a very like, you know, open house. You know, there's not a lot of furniture, all that kind of stuff in it. Which I'm sure they probably just moved everything out of the way to make it easier to film things. But it was very much kind of like a. It seemed very cold and like very like, you know, not not lived in. Now I have to say, and this is what is a little weird—not connection, but. 
both the writer and director of this film previously worked together and you would think, oh yeah, they probably, you know, made other horror movies, maybe some like shorts, whatever. They worked together on several B Christmas movies. Okay, and like we say several, like the director has like I stopped counting like how many Christmas movies he's made. He's made like Christmas in the Wild, Christmas in the North, Christmas in the South, Christmas in the East. He's made you know he's he got made the it. Christmas, he got the compass already done. The whole yeah, thing is everything Christmas wise, he's done it. The Christmas with the Prince, the Princess Christmas, they're all there. He's done all these. And like some directors, you know, do, they like to carry actors with them and, you know, have them in different roles. Some of these actors in this film were in actually in those Christmas movies. <laughs> um, the grandparents are played by uh, Sheila McCarthy and the grandfather is Julian Richings. Yeah, and if you... The name, his name won't sound familiar to you, but when you see him, you'll know him because one, he was, he's been in a ton of things, but I remember him most from, he was the janitor in Urban Legend, and he was also the Grim Reaper in the Supernatural series. That's where he's going to be the most recognizable, um, uh, the Shelly, she's been, or Sheila, Sheila. I'm totally messing her name up. Sheila, she's been, she was in Die Hard 2. Um, she's been in, like, she has a long list of movies that she's also been in, too. They're both mostly character actors that don't get the lead very often. Uh, but they got the lead in this one, and they did a great job. I mean, acting-wise, they both were very convincing, and, you know, you could feel their grief. Um, and they did not do, you know, they did very well on their part. Yeah, you really got a sense of how desperate they were for this to work. Because I love the scene where they get to, you know, they're you think they're going to church, and they are, but they're going to a meeting like at the library, and you're like, oh, okay, so I was wrong. So they're going, they're not going to church. It's like a church support group or something like that for grieving parents. No, they're going to the satanic group meeting. They're going to the Satan group meeting. Everybody puts on the black robes, starts lighting the candles on the pentagram, and starts talking about what devil things they did that week. It was crazy. To see all these old people just go into their satanic church meeting. It was so crazy. I thought, holy shit. No pun intended. Uh, is this something that happens? Like, I know the library can't, like, you know, discriminate. And it's, it. you could rent out the space or whatnot. I'm like, are people really having these kind of meetings in these kind of spaces? A- uh, I would like to be a fly on the wall. And then also there was fucking snacks, guys, after. There was snacks. Yeah, they had a little snack buffet going. It was pretty dope, actually. I'd go to their meeting. Oh, my God. Okay, so you kind of went a little past, but let me say, I want to know, when do you decide, though, that you're like, okay, so now I'm going to be a devil worshiper? They never really said, and I guess you're just supposed to assume that they don't really become devil worshipers until the loss of the grandson. Um, And that's when they're like, you know what? Let's get into, like, devil worshiping. That's a Let's thing. Let's get into black magic. And- yeah, we're going to bring them back, you know, whatever. And it's like, they've lived a long life. I'm going to say they're probably in their, like, 70s, you know? Don't you think, you know, don't you, ha- haven't you lived a long life where you think, eh, probably bringing back a demon, not going to end well, because it's like a leprechaun. They're not going to really follow through or, like, a genie. They're going to fuck some shit up. And then you're not going to really get what you want. So I don't know what they were really thinking. But as Shad said earlier, they were very desperate. Yeah, that was the thing that I think that, you know, their whole life they had, you know, just been normal people. Kind of boring. He's, you know, he's a gynecologist. She apparently is just like a stay at home. And they're just very, you know, ordinary, plain. And then this happens where they, you know, they end up losing their daughter and their grandson. And just pushes them over the edge. And there's no normal recourse for them. So these kind of just normal, boring people, you know, turn to, you know, black magic and satanic cults and all this. And, and, you know, we said before, they're not really worshiping the devil per se or like that. They're just pretending to go along with it so they can kind of like find out information from these people about they're trying to find like ancient books with you know, all these, like, you know, black magic rituals to bring back the dead or bring back, you know, bring back a demon or summon a demon who will bring back the dead. Things like that. And it was really kind of a cool to show them just 
you know, going around trying to find this out because they're not the the coolest people in the world. No, and the they're f- they're very bumbling and they they don't do a lot of things right. The film goes kind of like the past and then the present. Um, yeah, it kind of switches yeah, back. It flashes back to show what happened in the past. Yeah, so they could give you an explanation on, like, so you can understand how they got to that point and what they did in order to get to this. And there was a lot of. That's where, for me, the movie <laughs> kind of. There was like a minor discrepancy. And I know there has to be this discrepancy because then we don't get the end result of the film. But it's like they made it seem like. These grandparents really fucking planned this shit out. Like, they thought of everything. And then there were, like, slight little things that they didn't really think could happen or would happen. And they really falls through the cracks. And that's when the foundation of, that they were trying to build starts to crumble. Because these little things that they didn't account for start happening and it just really goes awry from there but i mean they went out like i've never seen a film and i've been trying to like rack my brain to think about like anyone that's ever been kidnapped the person's are like taken to another location thrown in, in like the basement locked in a room these people like went out of their way to like soundproof their house like the outside of their house so then you could not hear the woman screaming for her life they've kidnapped this pregnant woman and you can't hear her scream they put a freaking teddy bear cam a nanny cam in the room to watch her like every move then and they even have the tv like i was like this is some tech fucking shit right here that they have like a guy come in and do this they had like the image like the video playing and like different parts of the house so they like knew what she was doing at all times they didn't have to like go to their phone or like some device where they had to like watch her in a small screen they had them like on their little flat screen like in the bathroom and the in the living room everywhere they had had, yeah everywhere you can put a tv not the bathroom i'm sorry i'm at the kitchen (laughs) i'm at the kitchen they may have been one of the bathroom who knows um they what was the other the fucking other crazy thing oh then they set up this whole like like tinder meeting with some dude to make her look like she was like a whore and meeting some guy that was like you know to kind of give, hook up yeah she's gonna hook up with this guy when she's like supposed to give birth in like three days she's gonna go out on a date to hook up with a guy i was like i don't know how well, well that's gonna go over but they say the semen actually bursts through the thing and helps you give birth. So well, that's what she was trying for. But yeah, they set that up like you know that she was going on dates, and then they just kind of ditched her phone. And it seemed like they thought of a lot of stuff. But like you said, they did make some mistakes. But I guess that's true of anything, though. No matter how well you plan something out, there's always going to be something that comes along that you didn't account for. You know. Oh my gosh! Then we have the like the other thing in the movie that I hated. I hated. And excuse me, I'm going to just say I apologize beforehand for saying this. Okay, so no offense. But there's this one character in the film. Um, I am sorry for this person. I actually looked this actor's like name up and like his like pictures from other things came up. And he looks like this all the time. This wasn't just like for the film. And I apologize to you, sir. But he, this guy is a fucking ginger meth looking guy in the film. Like right (laughs) off the fucking bat, you see this guy and you're like, no, bitch, get the fuck out of here. Like you are creepy as hell looking. He, she's, the grandma's like borrowing books for him to read. He's part of the satanic, you know, group. He's fucking weird. And he really He's get in, he gets introduced in the beginning of the film and then he literally ends the film. Like, he's a big part of the third act of the film. And I hate this guy, like, for plethora of reasons. Um, but he's just so creepy looking. Like, I just could not, just thinking about him now, I'm just like, oh, God goodness that should have just his look alone he looks like the guy that when you go into the library he's the guy that you that walks past you in the library that smells like cigarettes and alcohol and then goes up to the librarian and gives her a long like list of books that he wants written on like an old like shoebox lid or something and she has to tell him that no we know we don't have these books we they don't exist 
They've never been published. And then he argues with it for 20 minutes. He looks like that guy. Yeah, he's like tapping the pencil, like, you know, on the thing. Because he has like a little jitter. Like, he's jittery. He's just creepy looking. There may be chicken bones in his pocket. I don't know. It just, seems like there would be. He's just gross looking. Like, he... If they were, I was like, at one point, I was like, does this movie have fucking smell of vision Because I fucking smell like a disgusting, damp, like, meth head around. <laughs> it's just, give him a fucking Academy Award. Because he fucking lived up to, like, the creepy ginger head. Which, spoiler alert, if you don't get the whole ginger thing, they purposely went out, I feel, feel like, went out of their way to be like, we need a soulless character. And it has to be someone that has red hair. Like, we have to fill this stereotype for this film. And he did. Yeah, he did a great job being creepy. If that was his only job, he succeeded. You know, the poor Audrey and Henry, they are a good team. Uh, You can see they have their little... It's like you love them because they're like grandparents and you feel bad for them because they lost... Like, the story of their loss of their daughter... And their grandson is terrible. Like, it is devastating. And at one point I was like, I don't know, man. Would I go and do some crazy shit like that? Even though I probably said at the beginning of the podcast I wouldn't do that. But I was like, would I do this to get my child back? No, because I know she wouldn't come back. She'd be like not the same if she would be all fucked up and like did not i've seen enough movies to know like pet cemetery you know like <laughs> she's not gonna come back a normal kid and i also don't want like a demon child yeah that's their plan is that they're gonna kidnap the pregnant woman hold her hostage and then use the black magic to bring the soul of jackson back and put it into the baby she's carrying so the baby when the baby's born it'll be born with jackson's soul again it'll be him who they and it didn't they never clarify this i may be wrong i i thought i you know i stayed awake for the phone so you have to correct me if i am wrong i don't remember them ever really stating why they why jackson was in the house like they did say they had done little things here and there which they didn't really show but it seemed like a surprise that he that the pregnant woman was able to see Jackson and Jackson was really in that home, which kind of, I don't know. I'm not going to say it doesn't make sense, but you would think that he didn't die in the house. He died in a car accident. So he just walked his way, like his ghost ass just walked his way back. He's like three. Like he walked his way back to the grandparents' house, which he didn't really live in. Like I'm assuming he lived with his mom in their own house. So like, I don't, that part of it is like, I don't know because you see the kid throughout the film. He's a ghost in the house and it kind of ties into the other things because like in all, you know, movies that have the same, you know, thing that hap- that happens. When you open a gate, you invite people to come in or things to come in. And when they open this gateway, other ghosts start inhabiting the home and they start terrorizing the grandparents. Um, Jackson is an innocent, quote unquote, that we know of, soul. He never really did anything malicious. He was just a kid playing with his toys the whole time and, you know, being a kid. So he was doing that, but there were these other creepy fucking ghosts. Hold, I mean, like that fucking show, like House on Haunted Hill, right? Is that the fucking name of the show? Mike Flanagan? The ghosts on there. Like, Haunting of Hill House. That too. That too. Haunting of Hill House. Yes. That's the, that's that's what it's called. <laughs> There's a lot of houses and a lot of, a lot of hills going on. Haunts. Uh... That those ghosts compared to nothing to these ghosts. These ghosts were fucking disgusting. Like they were so creepy. <laughs> the ghost under the bed was super creepy. Who had like the the bag over his head, and it was like could, he could do all like the weird like Doug Jones like contortions. There's always one contortionist ghost. Yeah, you gotta have a contortionist ghost. You don't have a good ghost group if you don't have a contortionist ghost. I feel. And then there was, like, the weird... And I thought it was a grandma at first. There's, like, the weird, like, old lady ghost who's, like, really into, like, um, flossing. 
so much so that she's flossing her own teeth off but her her grin is like ginormous it i mean visually fucking terrifying like i was like no these ghosts are really creepy (laughs) then there's just the creepy like you remember when everybody was obsessed with the 12 foot skeleton from home depot this year well there was the 12 foot ghost under a sheet in this movie oh yeah mega ghost mega ghost was pretty terrifying too yeah i mean he was mega mega ghost i wonder if it was like because that um that actor that like actor that that was like a giant that died he was in it follows um i wonder if it was like someone like that that was just really really tall it was just someone on stilts either way mad freaky yeah it was terrifying uh yeah, there's, there's the ghosts are terrorizing the poor grandparents and the grandparents are making left and right mistakes. And, you know, you got the pregnant lady. She is, you know, she, you get to the point where you're just like pleading with your captors and you're going to do everything, you know, to abide by them so that you could like get your way out. And, and it just, then people start you know, investigating and, and a police gets involved and there's like so police many detective. detective. There's so many things. You can't call her the po- a police. That's just, that's only our daughter that can say it's the a police. Oh, okay. It's the police. Okay. Yeah. The detective, uh, she gets involved and that's where everything really starts to crumble because then you have outside people coming into the situation that they don't really know what they're coming into and now they're basically fucked and it goes bad real fast from there yeah go there's a fargo moment i mean overall the film is pretty decent i wouldn't I, it has like a 97 rating on rotten tomatoes if you care about that at all but it, that's only like reviewed by like 38 people so for me that's not really that saying that much but i like the film the ending I didn't really like... I don't really want to give it away because it is a new film, but the ending, no. It, it's 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 ambiguous, but also it doesn't really... It's sort of ambiguous. Ambiguous, like you don't really know what happens or what happened to the... But I feel like they could kind of... They went out of their way to make it so... Not just ambiguous, but strange where you didn't know what was really going on, that it was just kind of confusing, confusingly ambiguous, you know? I, if they had just literally shown her, this is not what happened, but if she had just run out of the house and that was the end of the movie, I could have been okay with that. But they, they did a couple things after that I, you know, I, I don't know, it just didn't seem to fit with the rest of the movie. It didn't seem to fit, it didn't mess, it did not fit the rest of the movie, if I could get the damn sentence out. Uh... Let's talk about, <laughs> just really fast, the favorite part, my favorite part of the film is when uh, we learn that Ginger Meth Head has gone to the Satan, like the Hogwarts Satan Academy for, you know, students. And now he's this grand demon wizard who knows aramaic like he knows all these dead languages all of a sudden it's like what 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 (laughs) what's happening now (laughs) he's like the classic guy that he failed out of college because he couldn't be bothered to write the like two page paper that they wanted him to write in the class but then he went home and wrote like a 47 page paper about the difference in Darth Vader's buttons on these, uh, you know, armor between Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, and analyzed every little thing about him. He's that guy that he couldn't make it anything in life or college, but he got hooked on this hobby of like demon, you know, bringing back demons and this. Oh, he's all into that. He, he knows all that, but he can't do anything besides working, you know, as a Seven Eleven on the third shift. Yeah, he's. I have the perfect comparison. He's Nancy from the craft, you know, like I'm just a white trash like person that's going to, you know, get this hobby of like learning magic to better my life. I need to, this is the only way I'm going to make it in life is becoming like a demon sorcerer or med meth head or, you know, a witch. That's literally, it's the male character. Yeah. And he, I love the fact that he's like. Okay, I'll help you out with this ritual, but I get to keep this, you know, incredibly valuable book of witchcraft and $10,000. 
Yeah, he's like, and and $10,000. I love that he asked for the $10,000 after the grandparents said, we literally used all of our 401k, like all of our fucking savings that we had uh, to buy the book. And he's like, I'm going to need the book and $10,000. It's like, they, they just told you that they don't have any money. But alas, they were like, okay. Because they had the fucking money. I was just like, how rich? I mean, how much money does... I guess he was the only one in town. I don't know. Gynecologist make Like, who Who the fuck knows? But yeah, he... His character cracked me up because he was kind of alternately an idiot, but he was also kind of a genius. So it was... He I don't, He was the part I didn't like in the movie. I, they could have left him out as far as I was concerned. No, they, they definitely... Well... Yeah, well, if they would have left him out, then we don't, we can't get to where we're going to get. But I guess they could have just had another character fill that in. Um, the funny part also, I do love when um, the leader of the satanic cult um, just calls to let them know, you know, some shit had gone down. And she's like, I'm just doing this for fun. I just bring the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> this just seemed like it was fun. I'm not I'm not really into this crazy shit. I just want to have fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know how much fun you have by being the leader of a satanic cult with people that are in their 70s. I, and you I meet mean, in the back of the library? Yeah. I, like, if you had a cool meeting house, it'd be one thing, but you're just meeting in the back room of the library. Did they live in Missouri? Like, where did they live? Like, they did live in some, like place where it's like really boring and that's like the highlight of the town it's very yep. strange very very strange i give the film a solid three knives yeah i'd say two and a half to three i'll say three it's it's a good movie i just i don't care for the ending i don't care for the ending either it, it, it is a good movie it does have a lot of uh scare um scare scenes and the kills are, are good and stuff like that but yeah, the ending really ruined the movie for me. I, I'm going to need more than that. Okay? I need a little more. I mean, it's not as bad as the ending of The Descent 2. Nothing's going to be that bad, but it, it wasn't my favorite. Yeah, I'm not giving this movie any crawler poops or any bat guano. <laughs> Bats. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in and stay tuned to the horror. And now, folks, it's time to say goodnight. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. Goodnight.